On December 30th, 1978, the pride of the South invaded Texas Stadium. Though clearly outnumbered in a 14-point underdog, the Atlanta Falcons challenged the defending world champions, the Dallas Cowboys. At stake was the right to play in the NFC Championship. Atlanta produced a playoff effort that bettered Dallas for almost three quarters, and they extended the NFC champions to the game's final play. Only then were these Falcons finally beaten. But in defeat, they had won the respect of the entire country. No one could help but admire these battling, persistent Falcons for what they had accomplished in 1978. A season of mighty men and magic moments. The football season begins here early in September. And don't bother Atlanta about any other games until the last pass has been thrown. Football is its obsession. And it was delirious when the NFL granted the city a franchise. It was also delirious when the Falcons did not become immediate winners. But that began to change in 1977 with the arrival of general manager Eddie LeBaron and Lehman Bennett, the new head coach. Bennett replaced the Falcons' losing attitude with a winning one. And his poise turned a group of confused men into a confident team. He never panics on the sideline, and I think the players take uh, that into consideration. I mean, they see a guy that, you know, he's not worried, so why should we be worried? We'll win. And uh, I think that's what he's done. He's he just instilled this great confidence that no matter what happens, we can win the ball game. Lehman's first test of the season came at home. Stocked with eight rookies, the youngest Falcon squad in years faced an unenviable task. The Houston Oilers were in town, eager to show off the NFL's most coveted new star. Earl Campbell debuted with an impressive display of speed, but Atlanta counted with a defense made of 11 men, and Houston's one-man attack was no match for so many. Houston was neutralized, while Atlanta's offense moved under the command of quarterback June Jones. Jones to Bubba Bean nodded the score at seven. Then the special teams did the rest. Atlanta's youngsters like number 45, Tom Moriarty, repeatedly cornered the punts of John James. Then in the fourth quarter, they produced the hinge on which the game suddenly turned. Tom Moriarty's recovery in the end zone led to a 20 to 14 victory. But the promise of opening day was soon washed away as the Falcons were beaten three times in their next four games. Their one victory during this time, however, sounded a bugle call of contention. Against the New York Giants, the initial signs of a team that would never quit were first witnessed. Twice Atlanta fought back from certain defeat. 
A fourth down completion to Wallace Francis brought the Falcons to the nine yard line. And from there, Haskell Stanback carried the home colors to the summit. The first of many magic moments was completed, 23 to 20, and an Atlanta turnaround had begun. Everyone knew that Lehman Bennett's defense was of championship caliber, for these were men who were Falcons at heart. They lived by the code of the gunfighter, have confidence, walk with a swagger, and come out smoking. Their pursuit was described as the swarm and was so devastating and constant that if you were lucky enough to miss the first wave, it wasn't likely that you would miss the second. It was a defense that personified the word team. Our defense doesn't lift anyone out. It doesn't uh, give an opportunity where one man can dominate the defense. Everybody has to do their job regardless. We have to play together as a team. A year before, these men set an NFL record for fewest points allowed in a season. Now, opponents scored a little more often, but still at great personal risk. Atlanta's defense was a quarterback's nightmare. They were known as the Grits Blitz because no one blitzed as well or as often as the Falcons. Their attack was nothing others have not done. The difference was the Falcons tried them all. The object was to create confusion tie up several blockers with one defender so someone else could strike. They set a team record with 47 sacks, an operation that struck at the very pulse of an offense. There were no big names, only men who pooled their talents to make the team the star. Roland Lawrence, Rick Byers, Frank Reed and Tom Pride Moore in the secondary. Jeff Yates, Jim Bailey, Mike Lewis, Jeff Merrow, Edgar Fields, and Wilson Famuina up front. And Greg Brazina, Robert Pennywell, Dewey McLean, and the hard-hitting Fulton Kuykendall, number 54, at the linebackers. But while the defense could dominate an opponent, it took a kick from the Falcons' special teams to lift Atlanta on a winning track. Against the San Francisco 49ers, newly acquired place kicker Tim Mazzetti won the game with one second remaining. It was to be the first of many magic moments for the 22-year-old kicker. Less than a month earlier, Tim Mazzetti had been tending bar in a Philadelphia pub. Now, on Monday Night Football, he was performing for a nation. I was just glad to be out there and being on TV. You know, it's a rush. It has to be. It's an ego trip. You know, and I knew all my friends were watching the game and, and stuff like that. But it sort of didn't hit me until I realized, hey, this is Monday night. And I looked up there and I saw Howard in his box up in the stadium and I went, whoa, this is too much.
the bartender's accuracy amazed even himself, and it inspired the Falcon defense to keep the pressure on the powerful Ram offense. Los Angeles never scored after the first quarter, while Atlanta patiently collected five field goals from Tim Mazzetti, whose performance won the heart of every Walter Mitty across America. Atlanta had won their fifth game, 15 to seven, but the Falcons' offense had failed to score a touchdown. In New Orleans, the Falcons' offense pulled out all the stops in an effort to keep a four-game winning streak alive. But when their best efforts failed to count, Atlanta found themselves only 19 seconds away from certain defeat. Falcons will have to go 57 yards for a score here, and they need a touchdown, not a field goal. Three wide receivers, they're all on the right side. Barkowski with a snap, drops the throw. Clock is running now, down to 17, throws long. Everybody's down there. The Saints look like they're there. There's a ball in the air. Jackson catches it. Touchdown, Atlanta. Unbelievable. There are no penalty flags. The Atlanta Falcons have come from behind with 10 seconds to go in the ball game. The miracle of New Orleans brought their record to seven and four and pointed out something not everyone knew. The Atlanta Falcons could strike suddenly and from any distance. The draft had secured speedsters such as Dennis Pearson, number 81, and Alfred Jackson, number 85. Veteran tight end Jim Mitchell was as dependable as ever, while Wallace Francis and Billy Rickman, number 82, each hauled in 45 passes. As the Falcon offense opened up, the offensive line of Warren Bryant Phil McKinley, R.C. Thillman, David Scott, Mike Ken, and Jeff Van Note pulled together and cut down on sacks. Quite often, this enabled the Falcons to get the ball to number 89, Wallace Francis, who had a habit of coming up with the season's biggest plays. But while the offense had an explosive nature, it also had a flaw, consistency. And many chose to blame the quarterback. Steve Bartkowski was the first player picked in the 1975 college draft. A flamboyant quarterback of great promise. A promise that went unfulfilled for nearly three years. A proneness to injury affected his performance and eroded his confidence. And when number 10 failed to make the starting lineup in the 1978 opener, Steve Bartkowski's career hit rock bottom. But while discouraged, Bart never quit. And when given the call once more, it was a more mature number 10 who answered the Falcons' distress signal. He replaced self-doubt with a Christian commitment and was transformed into a leader who led by word as well as deed. The more Steve played, the more patient and effective he became. 
The instincts of a pure passer kept Bartkowski in the pocket, where holding the ball until the last fleeting moment enabled him to inflict the highest amount of damage. But of all the skills Bartkowski displayed in 1978, none was as impressive as his ability to drive his team to victory in the game's final seconds. And this was never more evident than in a Week 13 rematch with the New Orleans Saints. Steve drove the Falcons the length of the field with no timeout in only 53 seconds to win the game for Atlanta. Steve Barkowski's poise under extreme pressure lifted the Falcons into the world of contention, and they needed only one more victory to gain a berth as a wild card in the NFL playoffs. Atlanta began their playoff quest in Cincinnati. Their hopes were nearly smothered, however, when they were buried by the Bengals. An effort to regroup brought the Falcons back home to battle a team who had similar playoff aspirations, the Washington Redskins. Following a season-long Falcon script, the drama unfolded into the game's final seconds and required the heroics of many to break a 17-17 tie. Billy Rickman's reception brought on a game-winning field goal attempt. Zetti will kick from the right hash mark. Here is the snap. Ball is down. The kick is partially blocked. But I think Washington's offside. But hold it. Let's see what the call is here. Washington is going to be ruled offside. Here's the snap. Ball is down. Kick is up. Got the distance. Good. It's good. It was a shared triumph for every Falcon fan and player. But for linebacker Greg Brezina, it had a little more meaning. Because in 11 years, he had never played in the playoffs. Since 1968, Greg Brezina had played his heart out for his Falcons. He was an 11th round draft pick who went to any length to help Atlanta win. In 1978, Greg played with the intensity of a rookie. He hustled and blitzed so well, he led the club in sacks. His play earned the award of most valuable Falcon, but more than silver or gold to Greg Brezina was the fact that his team, the Atlanta Falcons, were marching into the playoffs for the first time in their 13-year history. The Falcons' magic season was a fitting preparation for their playoff encounter with the Philadelphia Eagles. The Falcons controlled the Eagles' great runner, Wilbert Montgomery yielding only 19 yards. But while they seemed to be winning the battle, they were in fact losing the war. The Eagles soared to a 13 to nothing advantage, and with less than eight minutes remaining, the cause appeared lost. Yet, those who knew this team best 
knew better. The sellout crowd rose as one to sound the alarm. It proved to be all Atlanta's slumbering offense needed. Atlanta narrowed Philadelphia's lead to six points, and then with less than two minutes remaining, made their final bid for victory. What drops to throw, waits, waits, throws to the right side. A minute 46 to go. They're going to have to start going for pay dirt in a moment. Bartkowski, Eagles blitzing. He throws long. Jackson's there. Throughout their magical mystery tour of 1978, the Atlanta Falcons unified and restored pride all across the South. They were mighty men who gave their all despite the odds, and their story was packed with enough magic moments to last a lifetime.